Hi, in this session I'm going to show you how to calculate GPA or grade point average based on a set or a series of courses. Now we have this table set up here where we have certain grades and in these particular areas here we can select our drop down of grades. So right now we've got our grades. This is something where you can select from a drop down. We have our grade value basically which is a lookup based on a table here. I'll go to this table here of the letter grade and the points that it has. Now based on the letter grade that's selected here, it's going to look up at that table. So this is a C. It's going to look up in this table and bring back 2.0. So this brings back 2.0 based on that lookup. And this credit hours basically is how many credit hours are assigned to this particular course. Math is assigned 3, science is assigned 3, uh, art is assigned 2. And this points, this points is the multiplication or the product of the grade value, column C, and the grade hours, column D, or for that particular row. Now, if we average this all up, it's going to give us our GPA, which basically is the sum of the points divided by the sum of the credit hours. So we have our table, our points here, and it's divided by the credit hours. So how do we create all of this? How do we create it where we have this table, and if we wanted to uh, enter in another subject, I can just press the tab key. Maybe in addition to art, maybe there's PE, and somebody here got um, an A minus, and it would automatically incorporate the grade value. And all we need to do is put a credit hour here to have it calculate out. And once it calculates out, it will update this GPA. Let's say GPE is one credit hour, and if I press enter, we'll have 367 based on that grade and the GPA here changes. So there's a lot of things going on here. Uh, one of them is a lookup. Uh, the other ones are kind of simple calculations here. This product, this is a divisor based on the sums here. This particular table feature is something else that also incorporates some automatic features where if you added another column, it will kind of bring in some of the formulas. It copies the formulas down and adjust it. So how do we create something like this? Well, I'm going to go ahead and bring it over here to example two. I just copied in the skeleton of this ta these tables here without any of the formatting. So it kind of shows up here. And basically, these are grades that you would manually enter in there, and the credits that you would manually enter. The other areas, a range of cells here, um, would be the calculations. So let's start off with how do you create this table. So with a table, all you need to do is just select your range and either press Control T or go under Insert Table. If we go to Insert Table, we click on this Table command. It will ask us if we have headers. We do have headers. These, this first row are our fields that describe the column. And when you have that checkbox, it's going to indicate the first field are the headers. So I'm going to click OK. It's going to create the table. So that table enables a lot of a lot of different features where if you enter in values here and you enter in another row, it automatically calculates it down. So let's go to this first column, this grade value. How do we know what the value is once we click on a grade here? Um, oh, one thing before I, I continue, I actually also missed the addition here of that drop down. So in the first example here, we saw there was a drop down here. So in, in addition, if you didn't want to have let me go back to the, this example. If you didn't want to have to enter in it manually, um, maybe you didn't want to have people mistakenly enter maybe uh, incomplete. If there has to be a grade. That would not calculate because our, ta our lookup table here doesn't have IC incomplete. So if we want people to make sure that they enter in selected grades, you would have to create uh, data validation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this range and go under data and go into data validation here. And what I'm going to do is validate a list. So I'm going to say allow a list. And in this list, I'm going to give my potential selections. And in the selection, once I already have this lookup table here, I can just go ahead and just select it here. So I can just select that lookup table and press Enter. And now, once I click the dropdown, it has those values. So I can click C, put C minus here. Science, maybe I'll give it a a B minus and history uh, B and so this gives you the ability to add a drop down and in the drop down I won't be able to add, enter anything else if I type U it's going to come up with an error 
right? And the reason why it does that, let me go back in the data validation. The reason why it does that is in here, the error alert, we have this is automatically default checked on. So it will show an invalid error message when anything except those values here in this lookup table are entered, right? So we kind of took care of that data validation if you want to have that capability there. Now the grade value, this is going to be a lookup and this is going to look up in the same table. It's going to utilize something called a VLOOKUP. So I put equal sign VLOOKUP. I'm going to look up this grade. It's going to, since it's a table now, it's going to reference that field and it's going to put at grade. You can also do, you notice that in my previous example here, let me go ahead and press escape. In my previous example here, it showed B4. So I can enter in B4, or what happens because this is a table, and I select, I'm going to go VLOOKUP again, I select the cell, it's going to reference that particular field. So I can either do that, or I can just put B4, and it's going to recognize I'm looking for that B4 cell. Um, the table array is basically my lookup table. So if I can just go back to my lookup table and just select the lookup table here, it's going to pick up from A2 to B13. I want to have an absolute cell reference because when it copies it down, it won't move these cell references. So I'm going to press F4 to make sure that there's dollar signs in front of the letters and numbers for both of these instances. Now I'm going to press comma because my table array, I've selected that table array. So the next thing is going to be this column index. So the column index looks at the columns in the table array. This is the first column, A, this is the second column. When I look up before the, the letter grade, I want to bring back a value in the second column. So if I see an A, I want to bring back what is the value in column B here. If I see, well, if I, if I see a, a grade, let's say I see a C plus in column A, I'm going to bring back the value that's associated with the same rule in column B. So when I press a comma, I'm going to get to my column index. So the column index is, this is column index 1, this is column index 2, basically the number of the column. So that's 2. And do I want to have a, an approximate match or an exact match? I want to have an exact match. I want to really, I want to match up the exact letter grade. So I'm going to click on false. And close parentheses and press enter. And you can see that even though I just entered in the formula for this particular cell, the, since this is an Excel table, it has copied down, it automatically filled it down. See, it's automatically calculated the rest of the formula down here. So I also want to make sure that these are in the hundreds place of the decimal. So I'm going to go select that and go to home and bring it out. Let's see, just bring it out one, right? So points is basically a product of column C and D. So I can just put equal. And I can either type in C24 to D4, or I can just select it. I can select that, and it's going to bring up that particular field. I, bring, I type in the multiply, so that's Shift 8, and then click on that field. It's going to bring up this particular field heading. I press Enter, and you'll notice that it also copied the formula down. So this is a, this is a table. Some also select this and increase the decimal place settings. So now I have that. Now, if I wanted to find out the GPA, I just have to go equal sum, and I pr open parentheses, and the table here, there's actually a name for this table. I don't have to like select this whole thing here. I can actually type in, oops, I can actually type in, press sum, type in the sum command again. I can probably type in table, oops, I can type in table, and it's listed three tables here. Well, which table is this one? Let me press escape and get out of here. If I click on the table anywhere, you'll notice that if I click under design, this table name is table four. So when I click on, when I go ahead and type table here, I want to select table four. So it's going to reference all the cells in this table. All right, I'm going to double, double click this. All right. And then if I want to have the sum of the specific column, I can start to put a open bracket, the left open bracket, and it's going to look and see which field, which header. It, uh, it's going to list those headers for me. So I want this header first, the points. So I'm going to select that. So sum of points, I'm going to close the brackets, right? And then close parentheses. So that's going to sum up everything here from E4 to E9. So I'm going to divide that by sum 
and then also table, table 4, double click this, open bracket, and now I want the sum of the credit hours, which is this one, so I'm going to double click that, and then put a close bracket, and then close parentheses, and press enter. And now I've got my GPA, I just have to adjust the decimal settings here. And how do we know that's correct? Well, there's a way that we can also take a look and see what, how the sum of this table is. If I click anywhere in the table and I go under design, I can actually have a total row. So this is, adds a total row, basically totals everything up above it. And in here I can also add another total row. So this drop down says, what kind of calculation can I do? Well, let's, let's do a sum of all these credit hours. Now if we do equal 493 divided by 17, you'll notice it comes out with the same thing, 2.9. So let me go ahead and delete that. And I don't need this total row here. It's just for it's just to show you that you can have a total row there. So now the rest of it is just basically formatting. Same with how I format it here. I can make this look a little neater. I can uh, add cell ref cells here, which make it look kind of nicer. And maybe that's like that. And this one is the same thing. I can press F4 just to to uh, repeat the same command that I did here. So if I press F4, it's going to repeat the last command I did. Now, this, how this got kind of centered in these three cells here is I just selected this. I press Control 1, and then the horizontal alignment. I'm just going to say Center across selection. And click OK, and that centered it across there. And then I just gave this a, I gave this this type this type of a style. And if I press there and press F4. I have that style. So basically now we've created kind of a nice little table and a little calculation for our GPA. So if you ever wanted to change things in here or wanted to update it, you can just type, oh, this maybe th maybe this is a pre-algebra, right? Pre-algebra and the grade was uh, an A. It recalculates that. That gets recalculated. If you wanted to add another row, you press the tab key. Like I said, we have P, maybe we had PE. And in, in addition to, to typing it, you can also, in addition to selecting the drop down, you can also just type it. As long as it's within that list, it won't give you an error. So I can type it in. It, the, the case doesn't really matter. I can just type in A minus and press enter, and it will see it. If I type in anything else, of course, it won't see it. So if, if I type in A plus, because there wasn't an A plus in there, it will not see it. So the case doesn't really matter here. I can, I can just type A minus here. Oops not underscore. We can too type A minus and then it'll be the same thing here. Maybe the PE is only worth one and that got updated. That also got updated. So there you go. There's a couple of things that went on in calculating GPA for this particular example. We had the table feature where we can incorporate some dynamic natures of the table feature. We had the drop-down list where we can just go ahead and select something from a drop-down, which is the data validation. We had a lookup formula here where we're looking up a value, pair of values from another table and bringing back a value there. And we also had some just basic calculations here and here, and some formatting, of course, to make it look a little bit more visually pleasing. Now, if you didn't want to incorporate having a separate table here, this is a, another example here. I'm not going to go through it too much, but this example here does not incorporate another table. Basically, it puts this particular lookup table, these columns, A and B, and these rows, 2, 3, 4, it puts it all into one cell here. It puts it into what's called an array constant. And an array constant, what it does is, you, when you ever notice a a function or a formula that has these curly brackets and something in there, it's basically an array. It's basically encapsulating a table into a formula, and it's creating that via the commas and semicolons. So if you ever see an array constant, this is an array constant here because it's these curly bracket values that are defined or enclosed within, um, or these, these values are enclosed within curly brackets. Let me go ahead and uh, make this a little bit bigger here. What it's doing here, uh, let me actually this make this a little bit bigger on another cell. Let me go ahead and copy that, close this, go down to the cell down here. Whoops. Go ahead and copy that. Control A. Let me see. Let me select this. Control C to copy. Press Escape. I don't want to select that. Go down here. Press the space bar so it doesn't calculate the formula, and then control V to paste. All right, that's a little bit bigger. That's good. So what, what is happening here, we have these curly brackets that are enclosing the particular table here, 
in this closing bracket, cur closing curly bracket here. So what it's saying here is this comma is basically the column. So it's A, and then the next column is this value, which is supposed to be 4. And the semicolon is basically saying this is one row. So this A4 is equivalent to A4 here, and this A minus comma 3.67 colon is equivalent to A minus 3.67. And when it goes, when it makes a colon, it just kind of pops down to the next row. So it kind of does that throughout uh, all these values here. And what it does is it turns that column, it turns this whole table into one line. So that's what an array constant does. So if I wanted to just not have a lookup table, I didn't really want to have this tab and save some real estate, I can actually put that all into one formula. And this is called an array constant. And it it makes it a little bit easier if you don't have too many values. If you don't have too many, if this wasn't like 20 rows or 50 rows, and it was a little bit manageable. If you didn't have too many values to input, you can actually put it in as an array constant, and that VLOOKUP formula will do the same thing. So if I went to this VLOOKUP formula and went to the formula evaluator, uh, that's I can press the keyboard shortcuts A Alt T U F. It's going to bring up this evaluate formula. It's going to look up B4, which is here. I'll, I'll evaluate it. It's going to bring back C, which is this value, and then it's going to look at A. No, that's not it. A minus. No, it's going to go across, and it's going to find C, and it's going to bring back two. So if I click evaluate. It's going to evaluate that particular output. So that's why it got, gets a two there. So that's the other way to create this type of uh, GPA table formula using an array constant within this VLOOKUP. And we still get our same value here, 2.61, where we have, whoops, I changed some of the values here, so that's why it's different. So anyways, it, 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 still, it still updates it. This, the only thing that changed in this particular example was the uh, array constant in the VLOOKUP. Everything else was the same in terms of the steps. So there was two ways here that you can create a GPA. Uh, you can use this particular example where we have our table and the VLOOKUP and also another tab for a VLOOKUP table. And you also can do it where we have just one tab and you put all that those range of values within an array constant. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.